Yes, yes, we do have so much to be thankful for. We are so grateful. Just one note if in your bulletin, it lists there was a baptism for today, but due to some of the weather facing the folks out to the west and south of us uh, across the country, some family members couldn't come in, so we're rescheduling that. So there would be no baptism. It is, a, it is really a privilege today that we can uh, have our, our partner, our, my friend, uh, Pastor Joy Johnson, share with us today. Um, in our Trinity Mission Guide that's available out in the commons, one, one of the little boxes says Bethlehem Midway. And a bunch of little items listed underneath that. Well, Pastor Joy was going to bring her message today uh, based on the Gospel of John about feeding 5,000, the miracle that took place back on that day alongside the sea. And she'll let you know that that miracle takes place every day, every week, right in our midst. So I was at a meeting at Luther Seminary a couple weeks ago, and someone asked me to describe Pastor Joy. And I said, she has the biggest heart for the Lord, strong perseverance, dedicated person, and she just loves people to death. And at the same time, she's as strong as a pit bull. Because she needs to be. And her stories that will unfold today that, that are a blessing for us to hear. So with your applause, please uh, welcome Pastor Joy. Before I get started here, I'd like to share with you this gospel reading that will be the focus, not only to, of today, but um, in the coming weeks. And I hope that in your own lives you will see the message of abundance that comes through loud and clear. From the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter. Some time after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs that he had performed on the sick. Jesus went up on a mountainside and he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Now Philip answered Jesus, Eight months' wages would not buy enough food for each one to have a bite. Another of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. And after the people saw the miraculous sign that, they, that Jesus did, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. The Gospel of our Lord. Let me begin, first of all, by giving my thanks to this congregation for the many ways in which you have partnered with our inner city congregation in St. Paul. We are just merely extensions, merely instruments through which God's blessings flow to many people in need. I like to see the baptismal font here the water and so forth, because it's a reminder. Today happens to be, um, if you follow traditional Revised Common Lectionary, the texts that are appointed, it's the baptism of our Lord Sunday. And in Jesus' baptism, what happens right after that, it launches him into ministry. And when we are baptized, 
Not only are we blessed, and the presence of Jesus comes to live in us, but he also calls us to follow him. We begin our ministry. It's not just to receive blessings and sit there. It's so that we might carry the message of God's love into the world, to bring light into the midst of darkness. And the neighborhood I serve is a dark neighborhood. And I don't need to describe all that goes on there that makes it dark. But we serve all of God's people, all those God has created. Everyone is welcome to come and receive a free meal on Mondays, to receive clothes, to receive household items, furniture. We don't ask questions. We don't ask people for their name. We don't ask them to register and prove that they have need, we give it away. It's freely come to us, and we freely give it away. This wasn't so the situation years ago. Bethlehem has been a congregation a little over 100 years, located in that neighborhood that made a conscious decision back in the 50s when it was in its heyday. It had about 1,300 members at that time, the freeway went through 94. Many, but the congregation immediately went in half the population because half of those folks lost their homes. And they moved to Roseville or where else. Some of them still commute in. Their loyalty is to that community of faith. But in the meantime, this neighborhood has changed. It's become more diverse economically and certainly ethnically more of the concentration of the poor, people with great need, people with mental illness and addiction, populate there. We have homeless that live on our steps or live behind the bushes of our church summertime. But this all got started several years back, as Tom alluded to the fact that we've known each other a while. I have a sister in this congregation named Ann Hansen. One day when um, one of our members, who's a teacher at one of the inner city schools, came and said, we need to help. We need to do something. And I said, what do we need to do? I thought we were doing something. I thought we were being the church. But you see, we're so focused on our programs and what was going on inside that we didn't know, notice the need about us. Well, in her school, there were a number of new children who came into the community and into that school as refugees. And they had nothing. And it's the middle of October. No coats, no warm clothes, no shoes or socks to wear, no underwear even, and they were coming to school that way. Well, I'm, I'm a little like the disciples because one way in which the disciples responded, which is typically the way we as people of faith can respond, is to have doubt, to look at the lack, what we don't have, to see the impossibility and say, oh, I can't do anything about that, so we walk away. Instead, Jesus calls us to see the way in which we have been blessed, and we can reach out and share our blessings, our extras, with others to make a difference, especially for those who are in need. So I called up my sister Ann, and I said, Ann, I need your help. You've got a bigger congregation. Can you get the word out? We need some coats. We need some shoes, some socks, some underwear. A few blankets wouldn't hurt either. For many of the folks we serve live in empty apartments in the wintertime, and there is no furniture. They're lucky if they've got a blanket. So that's what began as a partnership with this congregation in Bethlehem started because a request was made, and there was a willingness on your part to share your abundance. What has transpired over the years is there is an amazing way in which we have seen God work 
and abundantly bless us that we might share what has been given to us to make a difference for so many. We do a regular street ministry. We do lawn parties twice in the summer. We feed people every week. This next week, or this coming week, we jump off the deep end and we're going to start an evening meal as well. But typically in the summer, we feed Mondays and Wednesdays um, to the community at large, and we're feeding 350 plus people. And then we also feed children in the summertime, Monday through Thursdays, and keep them busy in the afternoon so they're not on the streets. But had you said we were going to do this even eight, ten years ago, that wouldn't have been the case. We see abundance coming in things like this. Potatoes and onions. Have you ever thought of potatoes and onions being abundance to bless someone? This happened just a week ago. We got a call and were asked to do a special food giveaway, and we do them from time to time. We don't know what we're going to get, but we have to rally the volunteers to come in and get it ready quickly. In this case, we had to get um, 10,000 pounds of vegetables and fruit off a truck in out of the cold ASAP so that they wouldn't freeze. Great majority of it happened to be onions and potatoes, staples, and many of the folks' diets in the inner city. They don't have the money. They come looking for potatoes every week. When we do our meal, we give food away, as well as clothes and household items. And it's only because I rescued a bag of onions and potatoes to bring that these aren't gone as well. Now I'll take these back and use them to cook this afternoon as I get ready for our meal tomorrow. We had a couple gentlemen who were much like these disciples in Jesus' story. But now when I see the blessing of God in our midst and I say, this is God's doing. Do you see what's happened here? It's changed skeptics and critics. It's changed the doubters into believers. A couple of men got a donation from one of our elderly members. And she didn't freely give out her money, I'll tell you. She wanted to know what it was going to be used for, and it had to fit her little agenda. She liked missions, so she would give them some money to go buy Bibles for street ministry. So they got $178 from this elderly lady. They went up to the old Northwestern bookstore in Harmar before it closed, and they were looking at all these dollar Bibles. Mind you, the print is so small that, you know, you had to have a good set of eyes to be able to read these Bibles, but we were giving them away anyway. But they had this collection of Bibles close to 178 Bibles that they were going to purchase. And they got out their money, and they're, they're counting it out, and the cashier is called off to the side by some unknown man standing off watching all of this go on. And the man whispers something to the cashier and hands him a credit card. God had told this man, who didn't know our two members, that he was to wait there until he saw some sign that he was to pay for something for someone else. And he paid for all those Bibles, 178 of them, at a dollar apiece. Well, do you suppose that had some kind of an impact on these two skeptical men? You bet it did. Those two guys, as a result, came back to my office, and they said, you won't believe what happened. I said, oh, well, yeah, I will. He's done something, hasn't he? And sure enough. But it wasn't, they came back with $178 in their pocket and all those Bibles, but it wasn't long that that $78 sat in my office. A knock came on the door. A fellow had a repair bill, and he had no way to pay to have his car fixed. 
the bill stated, and we, have, we still have it, $178. Said, guys, hand it over. It's not ours. It's abundance of God's blessing for someone else that has need. A few years back, I got a call from a lady, not a member of the church, but in an indirect way had heard about what we're doing with street ministry and helping people, feeding people, clothing people. And she says, well, my Catholic church doesn't even do that. Why is it your inner city church is doing that? I said, because that's what the Bible says. Matthew 25 calls us to feed the hungry, clothe those who are in need of clothes, and so forth. And she said, I want to help you out. My husband and I have had a good year, and I'd like to send you a check. And I nearly dropped the phone when she said $40,000. She sent a check, and I asked if I, instead of putting it in all this outreach, instead, if I could put it towards the mortgage payment that we've had to take out to repair this old building, which is a resource God has given us for ministry. She said, sure, with a condition I wouldn't reveal who she is. And so I did, and I pointed this out to our members. Do you see what God can do? God, out of his abundant love, has provided so that we don't have to sit and doubt and worry and have a mentality and a mindset of scarcity, but instead we can see what God can do when we are willing to reach out and to share from our abundance with people in need. And so that was a, p a big part of a time of changing a lot of people within that church and seeing that, yeah, when we take the time to notice and to thank God for all the little things we have, but most of all for his son Jesus Christ and what he means in our lives, the difference he makes. We are abundant people. But I also know that prayer is a piece of that, and we started a very active prayer ministry back in 2003. And we have about close to 50 people who will pray regularly especially when we have like a Monday meal or some special event, we ask for those prayers that God will bless the volunteers coming in and provide us with enough. God will provide whatever resources we need to share with others whom God is going to send into that place. That some difference can be made. And it happens all the time. And I keep pointing and giving credit to God. I said, we need to keep thanking God. He's an abundant God, a God of possibility when so many in the inner city are down and out. They are broken. They don't see any hope. They don't see any light. And sometimes it's just coming and sitting at a table and having a conversation. Somebody to take the time to listen that can make the difference for someone who is despairing. Sometimes it's a blanket. Sometimes it's a Bible. It's very simple things that can make a difference in the life of someone around us who's hurting in some way. We've seen a number of people who've been transformed by the love of God. We have an abundant, loving God that uses sometimes even weak vessels like ourselves to share that love with others. One of those who's been on the receiving end, who's turned around now and gives, is a man named Tony. Tony's an ex-con. He's the welcome person at the door when people come in now during the winter. He also acts as kind of our official bouncer so if somebody's had a little bit too much to drink coming through the door and they want to pick a fight, as it does happen, he will kind of put them in place and tell it like it is. And they listen to him because they know Tony. But he has a heart for serving the Lord. 
Now we have people like Brian. Brian is a minimalist, he calls himself, a Vietnam vet living on the streets. All he owns, and he doesn't want the, the cost and the responsibility of a house, a car, and all that stuff. He wears what he owns on his back. He carries a backpack with all his belongings. But he has a generous heart. He oftentimes comes with something he's found, and he shares it with the part-time outreach pastor or myself. So just before Christmas, he had gone to some bookstore, some used bookstore, and he came back with a little book called Laughing with Lutherans. He thought I'd get a kick out of that, <laughs> and I could use a laugh. But we get notes. I'd gotten this note in the mail yesterday. Anonymous people, I don't know how it got to the church in the first place, because they didn't even have an address on it. But it said University Church at Snelling University, St. Paul. How the postal person knew to drop it off. But it says, thank you for all the efforts behind the Monday meal and the giveaways. Many benefit from your generosity. No name. It's not our generosity. It's the Lord's, and we just funnel it through. We see that abundance and the difference it can make in people's lives. Marie is a person, quite a character. you got to know Marie. You'd recognize her anywhere if you'd see her on the street. She pushes a cart, and her identifying marks are her two black, rings she puts under her eyes with her mascara. Um, Marie has, has a heart for the Lord. She doesn't have much except what's in her cart, and she oftentimes is homeless. Many of the folks have issues that are beyond what we can serve, and we have to refer. Many have mental health concerns as well as addictions and so forth. But Marie is one of those folks who gives and gives. She comes and helps us serve our meal on Monday. She drops little things in the mailbox to give me as kind of a thank you. Might be a hostess cupcake or uh, a pencil, piece of candy. But she was so grateful that I gave her permission to sleep on the front steps at the front doors of our church for two months. That ended just before, just after Thanksgiving. And if you remember back what the weather was like around Thanksgiving, it wasn't warm and sunny. It wasn't sleep out weather, but there she was. And I kept giving Marie blankets and sleeping bags, and she'd turn around and give it to other people. She said, I saw somebody else who needed it more than I did. But at Christmas, Marie had gone somewhere a couple days before Christmas, and she came and gave me this gift to remember what Christmas is all about. A picture of God's gift to us. In Jesus Christ, and she shares, she gives me this picture and then she gives me a beaded Catholic crucifix so I can pray, because she prays for me. <laughs> and then there was a note that said, even when I was homeless, you still love me. There are many people around in our world, in our families, in our neighborhoods, that are in need of knowing God loves them. Somebody loves them. Somebody cares. And he counts on you and me who've been blessed in the waters of baptism and called out into the world. And we can have a mindset like the disciples did initially of doubt and scarcity and impossibility, or we can instead take those steps of faith 
and to reach out and to share what we have with those around us in need. Just to remind you of this reading from Ephesians chapter 3. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or even imagine, according to his power that is at work in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all the generations forever and ever. And then the call of Jesus to follow him for he is offered to be the one who leads the way as our great shepherd. And he says, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. It is the good news for you, for me, but also for all people. Amen.